What is up, Buckeye Nation? Flo Co here. Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great right here on YouTube. And I have a special guest today. We're going to be discussing the spring game. And those of you who follow her on Twitter, believe it or not, she does exist. And here's the proof right here is Lisa, the Buckeye Football Fangirl. How you doing, Lisa? I'm doing great, Corey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, here with one of my good friends, Buckeye, Buckeye sister. You know, everything's going great. Uh, <laughs> We got the spring game in a day. Gosh, yes. I mean, <laughs> well, what do you care? You haven't been paying attention anyway. I okay. I have <laughs> not been paying attention. I've got to be honest. I mean, you know, I'm the hugest Buckeye fan, but during there was a lot of action right at the beginning of the off season, and then things kind of slowed down a little bit, and life's just been kind of busy. So I have not been paying that close of attention and i'm really hoping you can catch me up Corey. no you're going in this blind i don't want to oh, tell you man but you know what despite not paying attention i am still stoked for this spring game that is happening on saturday now i know i know it's just a glorified practice but it is some buckeye football and it has been way too long <laughs> way too long since we've actually seen any semblance of buckeye football semblance is a good word this is yes. going to be like it's going to resemble the stratosphere of football it's going to be like a shadow image of football it's not going to be actual football agreed agreed but we will get to see our beloved Buckeyes on the field it's our first look at this team as we know it this year um besides you know some practice videos that have been supposedly posted that I haven't seen but <laughs> <laughs> what are we even doing here oh <laughs> uh, this is why we were here we are here Corey. i need to know what i need to look for at this spring game on saturday okay well we're not going to get any definitive answers um there's already oh. been questions posed if julian sand you know who julian sand is you've been paying that much attention do you know who that I have, is I have. Okay, okay so i've been paying i've been paying high level attention to the transfers the coaching changes there's been a lot of action with that but yes i have been paying so i attention to that so i do know who julian Sayan is okay good they're already suggesting that if he has a good a spring game should he be the starter ryan day has said he's in the mix that's coach speak i don't care yeah yeah, yeah he's not going to be the starter but but we're going to see his talent on display and okay. he is arguably the most talented quarterback in the qb room right now, even with Will Howard and Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz and Aaron Nolan in the room. God, that's a lot of quarterbacks in the room. That is a lot of quarterbacks. That's impressive, though, that he has been standing out that much. Yeah, best arm talent is what is being reported. I wouldn't be shocked by that, because to be honest with you, Will Howard and Devin Brown and Lincoln are not, they're not Dan Marino. You know, they're not Aaron Rodgers. They're solid QB arms. But yes. Ju Julian has NFL type pedigree, it sounds like. Um, so we'll see. He's probably the front runner to be the starter next year. I think that's one thing you can look forward to in the spring game is that okay. to see how good he really looks so far. Um, Grant, again, it's just a spring game. It's it's just a, a you said it a glorified scrimmage. It's it's of course. If, to draw any conclusion, remember the, the famous Bam Childress. If I don't know if you watched back in those days, um, but. The there was a guy by name of Bam Childers who just stood out every spring game. Every year is like, oh, this is his year. He's gonna be a, <laughs> he's gonna be amazing this year. Never see the field. <laughs> uh huh. So uh, it's not. I just want to say to people, temper expectations a little bit. Uh, All right. Who's that third string walk on that went off? Oh my gosh, how is he not playing? Ryan Day don't know what he's doing. You know? <laughs> We always have that, though. Every single spring game, there's someone like that that flashes, gets everybody mm. all excited. We talk about it. And then, yeah, that's about all it is. Exactly. So what did you think of the Dallin Hayden news that he is leaving? Oh, my goodness. I really like Dallin Hayden. So I'm really bummed he's leaving. Mm. I mean, I get it. You understand they have to make the decision that is best for them, but I liked what we saw from him. He definitely had his flashes. Um, you know, there's speak about other things that were going on behind the scenes that we don't see, but I am bummed that we won't get to see him in Scarlet and gray another year. Yeah. Who knows how much he would have played this year, but you need obviously heavy rotation. You could be facing 17 games if you make it a title game this year. 
so true. And yeah. that position is known for getting banged up. Especially at Ohio State. It's been ridiculous it's the last couple of years. at Ohio State. Yeah, it's, it's just been crazy these past couple of years. And as you know that Chip Kelly's been hired as the offensive coordinator, he's yes. more of a run first guy. Mm-hmm. So we could use the depth. <laughs> you know, so. uh-huh. And we have a new uh, running backs coach. I did mm-hmm. hear about that. Very, very exciting. And I heard um, that he is not afraid to uh, run the ball either. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he's, he's see, it'd be interesting to see his rotational patterns when he's the head, when, head coach, when he's the head guy, the running back. So, I mean, but. Obviously, I'll tell you one thing, as big and buff as he is, if a running back comes off the field and says, I don't want to play anymore, he's you just got to stare at his guns and go, okay, forget it, I'll play. Forget this. <laughs> <laughs> That'll shut him up. <laughs> exactly. This guy apparently was a, a correctional officer in a, in a prison, so he, you ain't scaring him. <laughs> so he's Ooh. seen everything. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. Trevian, Quinshin, you might want to toughen it up a little bit and stay in if he says stay in. I'm sure, I mean, they're tough guys. I'm sure there will be no issues with that. But I'm curious, how much do you think we will be able to to see and gather and kind of like pull from with Nothing. the running back? <laughs> this <laughs> game? You don't think we'll see anything? I think we'll see flashes of brilliance from, we know what Henderson could do. A Buckeye Nation yeah. knows. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really looking for Henderson. I already know he's a stud. I know Judkins by reputation and by film is really good. Let's see how he starts to fit into this offense. We'll see a couple flashes yeah. here and there where he's yeah. just, wow, he's quick or wow. He's... And that's the thing about Judkins. He's a powerful downhill runner who's quick. He's like a J.K. Dobbins. He does not have great top end speed. Probably won't break a lot of 80 yard runs, but he'll get those 10 to 15 yards that just go, wow, how did he even get that? Uh, J.K. Mm-hmm. was the king of that. Uh, just yeah. it's like, how did he make 12 yards out of that? You know? Yeah, uh, and we need that, to be honest. We really need that on this team. He's got a dog mentality. We need that desperately. Uh, I like the yeah. fact we're bringing in more toughness, um, despite Tony Alford saying he loves the toughness of the team up north where he's coaching now. I think Ryan Day is addressing that issue very nicely here at Ohio State. So. Tony, I hope you love losing because that's what's going to happen a lot this year. Um, uh, I don't mind trash talking. They're going to be they're going to be seven five eight and four. I'm calling it. Um, oh but, my gosh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, we're we're thumping them in Columbus. I'm not even worried about it. We but uh, be better. If you go to the game this year and we get thumped, it's officially your jinx. By the way, so, so I I'm not planning on going to the game this year, so it's not going to be on me. Okay, fine, fine. And well, we got to find somebody <laughs> else to blame. Um, yeah. Anyway. So wide receiver, obviously the big talk is Jeremiah Smith, J.J. Smith. Um, and I love the way that Johnny put out a little short today for Scarlet and Great where he said, which players can we overreact to? Because that's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I loved it. It was great. Johnny's awesome. Um, oh, and it, exactly. He, number one guy was J.J. Smith. Ah, I mean, people are already overreacting to him. So Are we? <laughs> I mean, he might just be that good. <laughs> Okay, okay. I I get what you're saying there. So maybe it's not an overreaction, but there's just been so much talk, so much buzz. And the little check-ins that I've been doing, I've even seen that. (laughs) She is like Grandpa Simpson in The Simpsons at the, um, you know, just walking in and out the door. I mean, when she checks on these things, I'm sorry, you know. Don't don't let her don't let her fool you. She hasn't been busy. She just doesn't care about the Buckeyes. Anyway, I'm kidding. Oh come just, on! That, 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 was, that, was a, that was a low blow. Okay, I admit. Uh, anyway, that being said, yeah, JJ Smith has been mossing Denzel Burke, uh, David uh, Davidson, and Ignosen. I know the the number one <laughs> secondary in, number one hey, secondary in the country last year, and he's treating them like they're amateurs. And oh uh, I got it. Just, well, he's just, that's the thing is he's a generational guy. I talked about this in the last video about transfer portal. Imagine being a young wide receiver who's like a four-star guy. He's a really good player. And you're just buried on the depth chart. Like, okay, I'm finally making my way into that rotation. Oh, man, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be so tough for them because we've got some great guys in there, but it's so crowded. And this guy legitimately is in that Julio Jones, Randy Moss category. And wow. that's Hall of Fame first ballot, you know. And mm-hmm. I get we're already put him on that pedestal, but it looks like yeah. he's he's not doing anything to you know discourage people from thinking that about him, and especially <laughs> when he's making one-handed back shoulder catches with guys draped all over him in the corner of the end zone. It's like, come on, 
You know, <laughs> what am I supposed to think? Oh my goodness, that's so amazing. So how much do you think we'll actually see of him on Saturday? I think we get a couple flash plays, like a Garrett Wilson spring game, who had a great spring game where he flashed a couple plays in his freshman year. Uh, we get a couple flash plays where he just like looks ridiculous. Mm. Uh, like like one of the quarterbacks does the famous meme where he closes his eyes and screw it. He's over there somewhere and just tosses it up for him. And he <laughs> makes a, a grab in between three guys. And then what happens inevitably is people say, well, our secondary stinks. You know, n- yeah. never mind the fact that this guy is just ridiculous. Um, yeah. If he's doing that to our secondary, what's he going to do to the other Big Ten secondaries is the question. Seriously. Because seriously. I have I, all the comments in our secondary this this coming oh, year 100 tim walton's a dog he's got him um, oh. i'm not even worried about it uh <laughs> that being said i mean but again smith i i actually mocked the idea that he was going to be a starter i was like yeah he'll play for sure but starter i'm like no i think he's gonna start now and uh not only gonna start he's challenging a mecca for that number one spot and uh what, what? yeah he's that good That's- and I love Emeka. I'm not dogging Emeka Vuka. I, he, same. I love Emeka. He is a dog. Yeah, he's a great player and he's tough as nails. And I'm glad he came back. Yeah. And we needed that leadership. Uh, Seriously. But J- JJ is just that. Denzel said it. He's the truth. Number four is the truth. So mm. it is. It is what it is. And the all funny right. part is, is you know what the funny part is, Lisa, is I was watching a video of all the they were playing around like what position would you play or whatever and. Uh, and uh, one of the guys joked about being a corner and saying he would shut down J.J. Smith. And again, what made <laughs> what that, why that stood out to me is that he didn't say, I'd shut down a Mecca. I'd shut down Carnell nope. Tate. I'd shut down nope. Brandon Ennis. He said J.J. He immediately jumped to J.J. So clearly, wow. above all the writers that are making, you know, because you can always trust writers only so far. It oh, seems to be. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they only changed their mind every other day. <laughs> it's like I've heard from writers simultaneously saying that Will Howard both sucks and he's also been the best quarterback in the freaking room. So I, it's. I mean, clearly it's a yes and situation, right? Yeah, exactly. It's and it's both <laughs> answers. Um, yes. But, but I mean, it sounds to me like even the team knows. Okay, JJ's sick. You know, this is, this is unfair. So he's going to be a cheat code for any quarterback that starts. My guess is going to be Will Howard, but that would be another interesting thing is like with Chip Kelly's offensive coordinator, the offense, yeah, it's going to be Ryan Day's offense, but there's going to be intricacy and change to it that they're a little different, uh, probably a lot more zone read type things, uh, RPO slants. We've seen that in practice videos. I mean, I've seen every quarterback run that, the RPO slant. Um, what do you, Let me ask you something. How – it's just a spring game, but are you excited to see maybe some changes in what the offense might look like? I am excited. I mean, spring game and beyond, I'm just very curious and intrigued about what the offense is going to look like, you know, not just spring game, but come the fall, come when these real games come up to play, because we do, you know, we're assuming Will Howard's going to be the starting QB. He's got some legs on him. Things are just going to look different, Mm -hmm. Um, especially with the running back situation too, having that one, two punch and the different styles of running there and and such solid backs leading the way there. It's, it's just going to be awesome and exciting to see what happens there. I agree. It will, will Howard running that offense from the old Oregon days would be interesting to watch if that's where we go with the offense. I do think we're going to lean more towards that uh, because it's Howard or Brown are not guys you just sit back in the pocket. Let, they're not CJ Stroud. And uh, mm-hmm. we sit in the pocket and let them dissect the defense. That's just not who they are. And they don't throw the ball near as well. CJ, but granted, like five people on the planet throw the ball as good as CJ. So, you know. Yeah. And one yeah. of them's 40 years old and plays for the Jets. So it's just like he's <laughs> on his way out. <laughs> so it'll be four people soon. Um, I'm not trying that we, so we got to mo- temper our expectations, but the quarterback situation be, Ill- thankfully, a guy like JJ Smith's there to be like, make him look a little bit better. Um, but I don't, I, I want to temper people's expectations. The offensive line is going to look a little different and it's, they're going to try different combinations and things like that. It's not going to be great. The defense line is probably going to eat and look good. Um, that's why they have the black jerseys on the quarterbacks. They know they're in danger. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, 
what are you what is your takeaway if the offensive line doesn't shine in the spring game? Sorry, what was that question? It was breaking what, up a little bit. What is your takeaway uh, if the offensive line doesn't shine as, as, as expected with the uh, uh, spring? The game? offensive line comes out and looks really not great. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice here. People are going to freak out all over Twitter. I mean, it's going to be. Are you going to are you going to join them? Are you going to be on Twitter freaking out? <laughs> I I will not be one of those people. Um, Just privately, got out. it. Anyways, but yeah, I, I'm also not on Twitter a lot these days. Um, I will be back. I will be back. I promise. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, of course, people are going to be freaking out. They're going to be like, oh, the offensive line is going to hold us back again this year. You know, we're going to lose every single game, like all those things that we hear every single year. But yeah, Overreaction. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up, that people should be kind of tampering their expectations because it is just the spring game. There's a lot of practice ahead of them. There's mm -hmm. a lot of new pieces coming into place, you know, you know just you know with the coaching changes that have come up and uh new system with the quarterbacks that we have this year so there's a lot different so yeah i'm i'm not gonna be freaking out but i totally expect a lot of other people to yeah spring game has become extremely uninteresting to me in the line of scrimmage and in the, in the trenches because if you just can't they're rotating guys so often you can't tell anything yeah, yeah, that's true. There was a year or two ago where Jack Sawyer was just destroying this guy named Grant Tutant, who was a backup, 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 backup tackle or whatever. Uh, he's since <laughs> transferred out, I believe. Um, and he was a four-star kid, but he just wasn't Ohio State. And mm -hmm. um, Jack Sawyer made him look ridiculous all day. And to be honest with you, and I think Jack Sawyer did start to come on at the end of last year, and he looked great. And I think he's yeah. finally – we finally put him in his natural position and let him learn. Yes. Um, so I expect big things from Jack Sawyer. But let's be real, the five-star number one DN type thing in the country, well, he's more like number two or three because of JT, but um, hasn't lived up to the billing just yet uh, from where his ranking was. And I, again, I'm not mm -hmm. knocking him. I love Jack. I think he's going to have a great year. I'm supportive. I Thanks. hate, I had to, you have to, pre you had to preface everything like that. Cause everybody, Oh, it's personal. No, it's not personal. It's just, it's just the reality that I don't even think he, I think he'd even agree. He hasn't quite lived up to that five-star billing yet. Um, yeah. Until the last few games of the year where he really seemed to turn it on. Yeah. And I'm happy for him. I want to see it because I, I do think he's got that Nick Bosa type potential. He just has to, uh, to be fair to him, they got to leave, leave him alone and put him at defensive end. And just say, go, go eat. Um, yes. But Jack Sawyer made that guy look ridiculous. And it was everybody kind of had, it was like, oh man, Jack's going to get 18 sacks this year. It's like, guys, it's against a fourth, fifth string tackle. It's, you know, not even practice squad type player. Just relax a little bit. So I'd be curious. I bet you anything like Kenyatta Jackson has a great day and has three sacks or something like that. But why isn't he starting? Huh? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest bugaboo with these games now is the, the fan reaction <laughs> yeah yeah and it's i mean it's a great reminder to keep these things in mind it is just the spring game this is mm. not what it's going to look like when they hit the field come end of august you know august 31st our first game roll into september especially october so yeah it's just a teeny tiny little taste of buckeye football for us uh mm -hmm. a semblance of buckeye football to kind of get us through until we get to an actual real game 100 percent. and then after the spring game we got a good four or five months of hibernation and uh i don't know about you but uh, i'm gonna take a long nap I won't be napping, but <laughs> there will be lots of other things uh, that I'll be doing to pass the time. We have 141 days until the first game, Corey. <laughs> anyway, um, that's a long time. I'm uh, not counting, but you know. No. How many hours and minutes? Nine. Okay. Um, anyway. Well, you know. Yeah, you got to watch really on right now. Bad at math on the spot. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so anyway, as far as like, let's talk about, so what you want to see is skill position freshmen to, to see how they look and things like that. I'm kind of interested to see James Peoples, who might figure to be the third string running back, or it's either going to be him or Chafee. Um, but um, but the young running back that people say reminds him of J.K. Dobbins, and I'm like, Alfred recruited him, obviously, and he was a high-ranking running back out of Texas, and Texas has some good players, last I checked. Uh, yeah, yeah, 
you know. And we've done okay there. (laughs) Yeah. um, Skies like that, I'm kind of curious to see. Do you have anybody on your radar where you're like that? Maybe nobody's really thinking about, but you're like, I'm kind of curious to see what they can do. And even though it's just we've all we've we've pre look everybody comment section we preface everything. It's just a spring game. We get it, but there's like little intri- little things we'd like to kind of see. Yeah, we've talked about it already. I'm very curious to see, um, you know, Judkins in that running back position, just to see what he can do. But I feel like that's not an unexpected thing. I think there's going to be a lot of people looking forward, mm-hmm. you know, and looking at what he can do in this spring game to kind of show them what he might be this season on, you know, as a Buckeye in the Scarlet and Gray. So I don't know. There's nobody outside of um maybe those freshmen that we talked about flashing so jj or you know julian saying i don't even know how much we'll get to see of him uh during the spring game but i hope him and aaron nolan get the most time is what i'm hoping because why not why not this is they're not going to have game reps coming forward i mean let them let them play um now (laughs) let let me ask you a question lisa that's not after the spring game i'm going to have an aftermath show because it's going to be uh, fan overreaction city when it comes to transfer portals. Uh, mm-hmm. What is your advice for Buckeye Nation for when inevitably there's going to be people and it'll just be down Hayden? You know, it's going to yeah. be there's going to be good. If I had to guess, I'd say the over under is like eight. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, of people re- uh, transferring out. It doesn't mean like JJ Smith's like screw this, I'm out of here. You know, but I mean like uh, you know, guys deep on the depth chart, maybe even a surprise or two that probably would have played this year, but not maybe feel like they fit into the rotation as well as they should. So, mm-hmm. what's your advice for Buckeye Nation when that happens? I mean, it's it's bound to happen. It really is. Everything when it comes to the transfer portal, NIL, like things have just changed so much and. Overall, I think it's good that players can come and go as they want. They can try out different opportunities. Um, I mean, the grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. And I think some people will discover that and and figure that out. But at the same time, it's going to happen. It's just one of those realities of college football now. Yeah. And I I, I was kind of having a similar response when I was doing the uh, transfer rumor show. It was like, okay, guys, it's, it's gonna, you gotta relax and take each situation individually. Now, granted, if like, I don't know, um, Devin Brown and Lincoln both leave, I think Mm. that's a cause for concern. Yeah. Yeah. That something like that would be concerning. But, you know, if it's a person or two at, other positions um you know or you know even that quarterback room it's it's kind of crowded so um yeah but losing the two most veteran guys after will howard to me would be mm-hmm. a uh, be a bad situation you go into the sixth season yeah. with a true freshman as your backup no, you better no. blow you better blow <laughs> some people out so they get time to play <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly all in all i don't foresee something like that happening so and you know fingers crossed it doesn't <laughs> otherwise maybe it will be time to freak out yeah i i and look i hope we keep one of them i think devin will probably stay even if he's oh, not the starter I so. yeah but- i hope so i really hope so just seeing how he handled everything last year and you know all the all the reactions all the smack talk from fans and stuff like that just in in staying loyal, you know, saying, or at least saying he's going to stay loyal, saying he's going to burn the boats uh, to, to stay. Is he going to rebuild the boats is what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might, and I, I can't fault him if he does, but I really do hope that he stays a Buckeye. Of course. Uh, he's a good, talented guy. And I, my guess is they're going to go into fall, not knowing for sure who the starter is anyway. And, and that's, you know what, if one of them leaves, you can't sit there and say, Oh man, they, they definitely love competition because if you're going to have that viewpoint of like Kyle McCord, you're going to have to have that viewpoint across the board. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so anyways, okay. One last question. Something that's kind of underrated that nobody's talking about. I don't, I haven't heard one podcast or anything talking about this. What do we, I want to see the kicker look good in a spring game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell <'Cause>, me more. <laughs> well, you know, I felt like Blake Heibel was the last one. We was really pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, fielding last year, I think, yeah, I think his name is Fielding. I can't even remember his name. Wow. Uh, blanking on his name. But anyway, he uh, looked good for a while and then kind of 
tapered off. But if you're going to play 17 games, potentially. Oh, my goodness. That's such a good point, too. 17 games is a long season. Not only that, but you're going to be deep in the playoffs against really good battle-tested teams. Yes. You're gonna need to, you're gonna need to score where you can. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You might be another Georgia situation where we need a kicker who can hit a fifty yarder. Oh you know? man, yeah. It, you never know. You really never know. And it stinks. I mean, I, this is something my dad and I used to complain about during the Cooper years. Is like, why can't we get a freaking kicker? This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's Ohio State. You can't get a kicker anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mike Nugent came along and rose the bar so friggin' high. I was like, okay, good luck. <laughs> It hasn't been the same since Nuge was here. <laughs> yeah, hitting 55 yard game winners. I was like, jeez. Uh, seriously. Seriously. Um, those those were the days. Yeah, it comes along once in a while, but I, I mean, I just, you know, college kickers are terrible, generally speaking, anyway. But can't we just get a dependable one? It's most of the time, and, yeah. and <laughs> it is what it is. That'll and then we won't get this answer in spring game, but I will be interested to see how this how these special teams changes this year with the, the new coaching style we're going for, having like fifteen different coaches handle it. Um, and I kind of like that approach, and I love the fact that they had the humility to call Trestle and say, "Look, I, I need help here." Oh uh, my goodness, yes, I saw I saw that. <laughs> uh oh, she saw, saw a video, folks. <laughs> oh my goodness, that that totally warmed my heart. I love that. Yeah, and I love the fact they're embracing Trestle back at the program. He's making announcements for the program, things like that. Good. Trestle belongs at Ohio State. Totally. I completely agree with that. And I, yeah, and it's, it's right. You ever seen, I don't know, you, you don't watch movies, but you remember the, uh, there's a movie, Remember the Titans, which is fairly popular. Hey, okay, I've seen that one. <laughs> okay, mark the date and time on that one. But uh, where in the championship game, uh, uh, the defensive coordinator, Coach Yost, is goes to uh, Coach Boone and says, "Yep, I need to stop being proud, and I need your help." He's Ed Henry's kicking my butt here, and uh, I feel like Ryan Day did that with Tressel. He said, "Look, dude, I feel like I got the offense under control. Defense is getting better with Knowles. That special teams is ter- terrible, and uh, I don't, clearly my approach isn't working." So. Yeah, no. Hats off to Day for doing that. that yeah, awesome. Exactly. I think it further cements his movement into the CEO position of the yeah. Ohio State program. And uh, I think we're going to pay off big for this year. So, yes, I completely agree. And I've loved um, just the, the moves that we've seen by day uh, mm-hmm. early in the season, how aggressive he is, because he is stepping into that CEO position. He is taking that step back from the hands-on coaching and going out and getting, you know, the right people to be, be in the places that he needs them to be getting advice from Trussell. That's what he needs to do. And I love that all that is happening. So final word to Lisa here, give a summation of what you're excited about, what you're going to be doing during the game. Are you going to do your normal game thing where you get, get some snacks or hang out? You're in your Buckeye gear, obviously, but also what, Final thing are you looking for in this game? Yeah, so I'm just going to be watching the game, Buckeye gear, probably a few snacks here and there, but it'll just be me on the sofa. Uh, I probably won't be screaming. <laughs> like I, I It'd be weird. Um, Touchdown! <laughs> that would be really weird. <laughs> um, normally, I'm just going crazy in the intense games. Uh, and my neighbors, uh, I don't know, they don't complain too much, but I got it makes me wonder. But yeah, I'll just be, I'll be catching the game. Uh, probably I will jump on Twitter, be tweeting about what we see, kind of commenting it up, chatting it up uh, with whoever's on there at the same time. And I'm just excited to see whatever we see on Saturday. I'm excited to be able to, to say, you know, I'm going to watch some Buckeye football. I'm excited to see the changes that have happened, maybe get some glimpses into the quarterback stuff that's been going on, the running back stuff that's been going on. Um, wide receivers are always flashy, but I love seeing what they do. And then I, you know, I just love our defense too. Our defense is going to be so solid and so strong this year. So I'm looking forward to it all. Not just one thing. I want it all, Corey. <laughs> now, how about you? What are you looking forward to? Uh, I, I just want the spring game to finally be fun again. I don't know if they're going to change it or not, but I since 2019, when I went to that one, I got to admit, seeing all my friends, being hanging out with people was fun. Being at the actual game was miserable. Uh, I was happy to be in the shoe. I was happy to see players, but it's like, it's just so bubble wrap, you know, just, it, it's like, 
I get it. Don't get me wrong. I don't want them slamming each other and getting hurt and things like that. But it's just, just... <laughs> it's almost like putting on a play rather than watching a football yeah. game. And yeah. that's, it's just frustrating to watch for somebody who's like, is, is freaky about football. By the way, I've watched a game with, with the Buckeye football fan girl. I have not yet seen evidence that she's crazy <laughs> yet, but um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just when I'm by myself. <laughs> I, it's just like round people just don't go crazy. Um, but, I have to contain myself a yeah. little bit. I mean, I don't want you guys committing me or anything. <laughs> well, there's other reasons. So I was, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> but <Hey>. uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I just I just want it to be fun, and uh, I want I mean, again, it just hasn't been fun in a while. But it, it used to be like, oh, my last breath of football for several months and now it's like yeah okay whatever it's like a half a breath of football <laughs> i don't even know i don't know about that anymore it's kind of almost like you the build up oh 100 000 people there and then it's like okay we're gonna, we're gonna play two in touch for <laughs> <laughs> i know i know it's definitely nowhere near as good as an actual football game but it's what we got it's what they're giving us, so I'm going to take it. I hear you. Where can they find you, Lisa? So I have a Twitter handle. I'm not on there as Allegedly. much during the off season, but I'm pretty active during the actual football season. So just search for me, Buckeye Football Fangirl. The actual handle is a little funky because of the character count limitations on Twitter. Um, I also have my YouTube channel, so you can find me if you just search Buckeye Football Fangirl on there. And I do preview shows and I recap show, uh, recap the game on my show and uh, just try to have a lot of fun on there. So how about you, Corey? Because I'm going to be posting this on my channel too. So where can people find you? Oh, I don't want people finding me. Um, I'm hiding actually. <laughs> um, I should have online. Where can they find you online? <laughs> uh, Twitter at Scarlet Great CT. Uh, obviously, Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great is our channel. And um, that's really it, honestly. I mean, other than that, I'm hiding. And uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, though, just try to have fun with it, guys. Don't overjudge or overreact. It's just a spring yes. game. It's a glorified yeah. practice. It means nothing. Exactly. It, just to put it in perspective, Dwayne Haskins was awful his his last his spring game before he started, and he clearly was not awful the year he played. He no. was seven like seven of seventeen in the spring game before he started. It's like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's just the spring game. <laughs> yep. Fields the same thing, four of twelve. He clearly was okay. <laughs> yeah. The actual season will show us what we need to see. But yeah, like Corey was saying, just have fun, enjoy it, watch it with some friends or mm. loved ones, eat some some good snacks and just try to have a good time. Snacks are not my problem. Anyway. So... <laughs> Anyway, guys, appreciate you all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hit that like button if you like what you see. Hit the like button on the Buckeye Football Fangirl as well. And subscribe to both. Don't just do one or the other. Subscribe to both. Her her videos are far more sophisticated than ours, just so you know. Um, uh, <laughs> Some fancy editing. And <laughs> much better editing. Much better. I don't do any editing. So um, <laughs> it's, it shows. So, guys, appreciate you all. As always, goodbye, God bless, and, of course, Lisa. Go Bucks!